My name is Peter, and I'm from NanoSatisfy, and we launch satellites into space. Our satellites are about this size, and they're filled with a camera, sensors, and Arduino processors, which we let you program and then control the satellite for a full week's time for just $250. Now, why do we do that? Science and technology are at the core of innovation that drives our economic growth. Yet over the next few years alone, we are short over a million graduates in those core fields. And why is that? Because we teach it the same old boring way in a classroom with a textbook, and no one wants to learn this way. When I was at CERN, what inspired me was that I got to touch the accelerator that I was programming. And we believe in the inherent inspiration power of space and bringing it into the classroom and letting our students touch satellites and use them for their education. In our AutoSec Control Center, you get to select our satellite, and then you can task it with simple things like taking a picture, or you can develop your own application and upload it to the satellite after it has been tested by us. Now, people have come up with truly inspirational uses of our platform. You can make you know, the planet a safer place by watching out for those asteroids that just hit Russia, unfortunately. Or do true science by ingenious combination of our sensors, like a camera and a Geiger counter, which one of our uh, customers figured out. Or do fun things like playing paintball in space or putting up a file server. 20 years ago, we thought a computer is a gadget. But today, we know you can't do impactful education without it. And five years ago, the same thing happened with a tablet, which today we know is a very inspirational education tool. Five years from now, I want every student to have access to a satellite, because that's the right way to learn science, doing it hands-on and going into space. Thank you. Wow. OK, grand jury. What do we think? Who, who selected them? Who pulled them out of the? So just so people know um, how the demo pit works, we asked the grand jury to go out to the demo pit. Those are 200 people selected uh, off of AngelList and other places to, to show their wares who are already launched. And they go pick some, and then they put them on stage, and I don't know who they are. But who, who picked it and, and why? Uh, or amongst who picked it, yeah. Um, I, I, I picked Alpha. Jason because I thought this is the perfect platform for kids to build death rays in orbit. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, you've got to get them started somewhere in their career in supervillainy, and this seemed like the correct per first step. <laughs> awesome. Alfred, what was I, your motivation here? Yeah, I just was very fascinated with s space when I was a child, and part of the reason why I um, did well in school was because um, I had a great science teacher and, who inspired me, and we th I think this is going to inspire a lot of kids. Yeah, we yeah. think too. So, so this is a great inspiration. You should be really proud. 10 years ago, I was actually now, it's 13 years ago, I was driving on the LIE with a good friend of mine, uh, Elon Musk, and it was night out. And uh, I'm like, what are you going to do? And he had just sold PayPal. And he's like, what are you going to do? And I had just sold my business, or taken my business public. And um, I was like, why don't we work on space? And he's like, that's a stupid idea. And I'm like, no. <laughs> and, and literally, it was like, yeah, that is stupid. No, it's not stupid. Yes, it is stupid. And, and, but, but really, what came out of that uh, two and a half hour long car ride was there is no question that the future of humanity is in space. And so if you're inspiring the kids today to think about space, you are doing God's work. So. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Any other questions or thoughts? Harvey? You had How can you do this for $250? It seems okay. too cheap. Um, that's my IP. There is a way to do it. Um, and that's like part of the stuff that we, um, that we patent. But I mean, when, you, when I was explained to me yesterday, you actually are letting more than one school use it at the same time for that $250, right? Mm -hmm. So they're renting it multiple times for that $250. Yeah. So there's multiple $250s coming in. What does it cost to put one of those in space? You just you're, so, are you deadheading on some one so, of Elon Musk's rockets? Um, actually, we will. In September, our second launch, our first launch is in July, our second launch is in September, and we will uh, ride on Elon's rocket to the space station. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that is happening in space is uh, standardization, and it's replicating what happened in the computer industry when the PC eradicated the mainframe. And this is called a CubeSat. It's a standard 
form factor, power factor, and weight factor. And the standardization in the space industry is radically driving down cost. Awesome. What is your patent? Um, the, a pro, a pro, is it done so you can talk about it? Um, uh, it, is, it is filed. It hasn't been granted. Um, the patent is the process for you sitting on your computer, logging onto the internet, getting to the satellite, and having a payload that you control on the satellite. That whole chain. That's a freaking valuable patent. Yeah. I mean, this is, I don't know if he's still here, but Robert Scoble will eat your heart out. I mean, this has got to be the neatest server to rent a slice of time on. Yeah. <laughs> and, and where do you see this going? I mean, if, if you're successful, and you build a sustainable business out of here, and we're, here, we're sitting here at launch, you know, the 26th version in 33, hopefully we'll all be here, 2033. What will, what will you present in 2033? In 2033, I have no idea, but I can tell you what I want to present in five years. Okay. In five years, I want to have 500,000 students in the U.S., 750,000 in India, and a million in Europe having access to the satellite, and have 10,000 companies across the planet taking advantage of a sensor platform of 200 satellites orbiting the globe, which basically gives you access to any point on Earth with various numbers of data points instantly on your iPhone. Wow. It's a big vision. Uh, let's is, keep everything is, going. And how is that, final question to Dave. How is it powered? Because, I mean, yeah. obviously, that's not going to last no, very long. It's a, it's a very good question. Um, power is through solar panels. And we started out with solar panels being something like 0.1 watts to 1 watt about uh, seven years ago. We are now up to about 35 watts with de deployable solar panels. They, they fold out. Yes. OK, so that's really not. What no. It, okay. <laughs> yeah, that was like but a it is stage. a three-year satellite. It is still on the standard. Okay. Hey, yeah, last question, problem. Alfred. Go ahead. Hey, so Peter, one question: um, Have you thought about any other business models besides selling time? Because time is a finite number yes. of yes. hours in a day. Yes. You, you, you can tell the big shots are knowing where this is going. Um, the big story behind this is data. Um, we're not quite ready to talk about it publicly, but the big story is not selling time but the data that you can collect from such a platform is exceptionally valuable to a number of industries. Great. Awesome. Thank awesome. you, guys. Let's hear it. Okay.